Hey guys, in today's video I'll be doing a tropical update and uh, before we jump in to discuss all of the tropical cyclones that are occurring currently in the Atlantic, I want to take a few minutes to talk about this new article that I just recently found from the Washington Post talking about how uh, Hurricane Ada, when it was uh, still in the Caribbean Sea, and uh, right before it hit Nicaragua and made landfall in northern Nicaragua, uh, the storm, this is this pretty much the satellite image of what Ada looked like at peak intensity. And you can see there's that very small pinhole eye. And then you can see those negative 80, negative 90 degree cloud tops filled in all around the center of the system and pretty much engulfed the entirety of the system making the storm even stronger because of that. And in fact, it says here in the beginning, literally the first paragraph of this whole article, it says, Hurricane Ada slammed into Nicaragua with maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour on Tuesday. This was last Tuesday. Uh, now, the monstrous hurricane was even stronger Monday evening when satellite data suggested that the storm contained 190 mile per hour winds near its core. If this were true, this would make Hurricane Ada one of the strongest storms on record in the North Atlantic Ocean Basin. And uh, I gotta say, I'll say this right now, there's still a good amount of evidence that meteorologists, just meteorologists by themselves, definitely think that uh, Hurricane Ada was a Category 5 in the end. Uh, whether it was a 190 mile per hour sustained Category 5 in the end, or whether it was just like a 160 or 170 mile per hour Category 5 in the end, it doesn't matter. Just it, 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 The point is, it seems that pretty much all meteorologists think that the storm ended up being a ca Category 5 um, in the end. Now... Um, and what's said below here, um, says, all right, uh, where is it? Is it down here? Um, and I gotta figure this out. So it says here um, that at 7 p.m. Monday, the National Hurricane Center drew upon the method to peg Ada's maximum sustained winds at 150 miles per hour, but the storm continued to strengthen on satellite. The Air Force team uh, aboard the replacement C-130 aircraft didn't make it inside the storm's core until closer to 9 p.m. Eastern time, but when it did arrive, no Category 5 winds were observed. Now, there's... That, that's one of the key things here about Ada is that the because we weren't able to get enough whatsoever recon planes or recon data from the recon planes, from the NOAA planes or the Air Force planes in the storm when it was at peak intensity late Monday uh, afternoon and evening last week, uh, that's going to be one of the really hard key factors to figure out whether or not the National Hurricane Center or just in general the, Dep the World Meteorological Organization, whether they'll find that, in fact, they should um, upgrade ADA to be a Category 5 hurricane. You can see, um, you can see it says here that... Uh, once the Hurricane Hunter flight finally arrived inside the storm Monday night, lesser winds of high-end Category 4 intensity were found inside the storm. As a result of the lack of aircraft, ob aircraft observations, it remains unclear whether Ada ever made it to a Category 5 ranking. Um, now, uh, it says here, this is one of the um, biggest things here. It says, in fact, meteorologists were without... Um, aircraft observations all day Monday because of me mechanical issues. Three different aircraft, either aircrafts, either turned around before uh, ever getting near the storm or did not even leave their home airport. Um, now, now it says 
here that uh, which also really helps prove me my point that I definitely think Ada did at least get to barely a Category 5 hurricane in the end. Whether or not it became a very strong Category 5, category five hurricane in the end, I think it definitely did get to uh, a Category 5 hurricane, uh, maybe a week one at most, at the least. Um, but uh, it says here that the storm maxed out the scales for satellite-derived hurricane intensity when it was barely 75 miles offshore and set to make a vicious and catastrophic landfall, which uh, that's referring to when making landfall in Nicaragua. Uh, it says, many meteorologists, though not those at the National Hurricane Center in Miami, thought it was a Category 5 storm. So there are tons of meteorologists, though, outside of the National Hurricane Center that definitely think Ada was a Category 5 storm. So when we go into the post-analysis for this hurricane season, getting towards January, February, and especially once we get to the springtime around April, May, when the WMO has their yearly springtime meeting to discuss and reanalysis the hurricane season from the prior year so for the upcoming wmo uh, meeting that's gonna occur in like april may this year they'll be reanalyzing reanalyze reanalyzing the reanalyzing this year's hurricane season and the 2019 atlantic hurricane season to see uh what storms they think need to be potentially upgraded in intensity because there is uh some reports, some thing that maybe Dorian ended up being at 190 mile per hour sustained Category 5, so I don't know, we'll see if that happens, but it's fine, it, it, it really doesn't matter if Dorian ends up being upgraded or downgraded, whatever, um, in wind or pressure intensity, because in, in, in the end, Dorian ended up being a very powerful, intense, and catastrophic hurricane. Um, one of the more, uh, from 2019 season, one of the more uh, interesting things that I want to see uh, what the WMO thinks is whether or not Lorenzo ends up truly being a Category 5 hurricane in the end. Um, and Because uh, initially, um, up to this point, Lorenzo is said to have peaked at uh, sustained winds of 160 miles per hour, which is um, a Category 5, but a weak Cat 5. But... Uh, now, for this year's hurricane season, when they look at this year's hurricane season, I think they're going to definitely keep Laura's intensity the same. I don't think Laura did get to Category 5 intensity. I think the uh, intensity they declared it officially peaking at is correct at 150 miles per hour and its pressure in the 930s. I de definitely think that's correct. I think Sally, though ended up being a category three hurricane right at landfall so there is that i think that could uh, that was the case um and then also just uh, hurricane ada i think ada they will upgrade ada to being a category five hurricane in the end as well so there's that i was just i uh, just wanted to show you guys this um article from the um, Washington Post. Uh, this is a very, very interesting and very informative article. If you guys want to check this article out, I will post the link down below in the um, down below in the um, in the discussion part of my video. Uh, so if you guys want to check out the video, click the link down there. Um, now, all right. Now let's just jump into and uh, uh, look at what's going on in the Atlantic currently with tropical cyclones. All right, so we have, of course, Ada is still going on. And, in fact, Ada is very interesting now. It's a strong tropical storm, winds of 70 miles per hour, pressures at 990 millibars, and it's moving north-northeast at 10 miles per hour. It is now uh, forecast to officially make landfall along the west coast of Florida. And the west coast of Florida, generally, was the only part of the coastline of the U.S. that wasn't ever, up till this point, put under any kind of tropical cyclone watches or warnings or anything so um it's very interesting that now it's uh the, pretty much generally that whole west coast has been put under a tropical storm watch tropical storm warnings a hurricane watch uh so it's very interesting um tampa the tampa area could see up towards um three to five feet of storm surge so that will be very very interesting uh, rainfall, Tampa could see between four to six inches of rainfall, and uh, if you, if because they're in the yellow, the yellow shading is four to six inches of rainfall. The greens are really any accumulation up towards four inches of rainfall, so uh, that is uh, that is uh, something to really take into account. Flash flooding potential is the largest amount of flash flooding potential is in the yellow shade of sli a slight chance of flash flooding at 10%. 
Tampa and St. Petersburg are within that. And then the green is just a marginal, marginal risk of flash flooding at 5%. So you guys in the green still have somewhat of a chance of flash flooding, but uh, you shouldn't really expect much flash flooding from uh, Ada. Um, it's really just people living in the yellow shade of slight chance that really need to watch out for potential flash flooding, especially if you live in the Tampa, St. Petersburg area in that general area because of course you guys are kind of surrounded by water with the tampa bay um there and then of course there's just the gulf generally being pushed all that water of the gulf being pushed into the coastline there so you want to be very mindful of that uh now the wind speed probabilities for ada for the west coast of florida generally up to 100 percent chance for that um, central west coast of florida of tampa st petersburg and a uh, few some of the areas north of tampa as well um, but uh, generally, you guys will likely see tropical storm force winds for sure. Hurricane force wind speeds, you likely won't see that. Um, even though it did get upgraded back to a hurricane earlier for a bit of time, but it's weakened um, uh, back down to a tropical storm again um, now. So uh, here's the 58 mile per hour wind speed probabilities. You guys will, uh, there in especially the central west coast area of, again, Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area, will potentially see those that strong of winds at 58 mile per hour wind speeds uh, you guys have up towards a uh 60 percent chance maybe up towards a 70 percent chance of 58 mile per hour wind speed so that's uh, very interesting you want to take that into account um the earliest reasonable arrival time for travel storm force winds for ada for the west coast of florida you guys are already seeing that you've um, generally just started to see those travel storm force winds starting to uh, impact you guys uh, it's already reached there wednesday at 2 p.m we're already at like 3 15 so yeah you guys are already experiencing some of those stronger winds so uh yeah if you guys want to really by this point most likely you want to really be hunkered down just to ride out the rest of the storm um, now let's go back and look at what is now you know what to save time let me just reload the page let's look at tropical storm theta theta just formed uh late what was it late um monday night i believe and uh, now it's a 60 mile per hour tropical storm uh, its pressure is 993 millibars and it's moving to the east northeast at 10 miles per hour and will likely stay at tropical storm strength and continue to weaken generally i think from this point forward and then become post-tropical likely by the time we get to this upcoming monday and then that will also be history going towards the early part of next week the next big thing we want to look at is this d new disturbance in the caribbean that the national hurricane center has been monitoring for quite a while and uh, now it has a 30% chance of development over the next two days, but an 80% chance of development over the next five days. So we're really going to have to watch that moving forward into um, later this week, into the weekend. Uh, it says that a um, uh, that uh, as the system moves farther, slowly farther westward into a more conducive environment, environmental conditions over the next several days, a tropical depression is likely to form late this week or this weekend when the disturbance uh, reaches the central or western Caribbean Sea. And you can see the tra trajectory of where the system will be heading. It will be heading generally in the same exact direction as Ada was heading towards Nicaragua there, that same general Nicaragua, Honduras coastline area so that's very very bad news for those regions i really pray honestly that this system doesn't hit those same general regions as ada did just truly devastating with a strong category four hurricane just pummeling those areas with extreme catastrophic amounts of rainfall and storm surge amounts it was terrible it was truly terrible so let's really hope that this system doesn't hit those same areas but Really, with the outlook of the potential of this, uh, certainly could be a possibility. You guys living in those same areas of coastal Nicaragua and Honduras, you guys really want to keep an eye on this system very, very closely. All right, now let's go to tropical tidbits, and let's look at the uh, let's look at what Ada is looking like currently on the satellite image imagery, and uh, you can see it's a very degraded storm. The dry air has really taken a toll on the system. There's 
really barely any convection going on whatsoever around the center. A lot of the main convection is way off to the east and north of this system, of the center of the system, so uh, it's not looking great whatsoever. And you can see um, with the general, the general great consensus with the models uh, for the track f going forward with ADA will likely cross Florida and then continue to dissipate as it heads farther out to sea in the Atlantic away from the east coast and land areas. So uh, that's good news. And then, of course, on top of that, the mile intensity guidance for ADA, it will generally just continue to weaken from this point onward and be fully history going towards likely three to four days from now, I think. Um, and now, now let's look at what theta is looking like on the satellite imagery. And theta's main area of um, circulation and the main storm is really this big area of convection blowing up, consistently been blowing up in and around the center. There's that center being enveloped um, with that uh, generally pretty, st the strongest, generally more or less the strongest part of the convection is blowing up around the center. So that's a good sign um, that it's generally continuing to try to uh, keep its act together, keep its intensity pretty much steady. Um, but uh, as we head farther into this week, most likely again, especially towards Saturday, Sunday, Monday, the system will really start to degrade in intensity. Actually, in fact, probably even as soon as really Friday, um, the system will start to really degrade in intensity and start to really um, start to dissipate. Um, but uh, you can see uh, model uh, model uh, track guidance is really, um, really uh, agreed upon that it will continue generally towards the east and then curve sharply to the north and east and continue to dissipate from that point onwards. So there's that. And then the model intensity guidance currently for theta is showing it generally staying um, st staying steady generally with its intensity currently and then slowly starting to degrade in intensity as we head over the next two, three, four days. And then finally will start to like die out and dissipate. Um, so there is what uh, it's, the storms are looking like currently on satellite imagery. One last thing as well I want to show you guys is Invest 98L. That is this new Caribbean system. Um, so just want to really clarify that. This is the new Caribbean system. This is Invest 98L now. And we have gone through that whole Invest um, numbering list kind of uh, for the hurricane season thus far, I think five to six times by this point, which is truly insane. That, that really speaks to the amount of tropical activity we've had this year's hurricane season. You can see um, the system has really started to try, try to get its act together now uh, with lots of really strong convection blowing up uh, around the south and east of the center, which looks to be um, around here. Um, now, as we, we got, we, of course, we still got to give it it seems another two, three days or so to really get its act a lot more together. So the National Hurricane Center will start being able to declare a tropical depression, tropical storm, and we'll be able to start uh, getting advisories out on it. Um, and in fact, once the system does get named, which it most likely will, as especially as we head towards again Friday, Saturday, and generally the get going to getting towards this weekend. Um, it will be named Iota, which would officially make it the 30th named storm of this year's Atlantic hurricane season, which is truly insane. Um, here is, so far for the hurricane model track guidance, only one model has been put in. And you can see from where it is now, it generally will, it seems to generally move to the west, the direction west and towards pretty much that same general um, area of the Nicaragua coastline that Ada made landfall in. So that's very, very concerning. Um, here's the US GF GEFS ensemble model track guidance. You can see it's also generally showing the system really strengthening as it's heading in more of the west direction. But you can see it also, this this um, current run is also uh, starting out runs of the GFS, GEFS Ensemble model track guidance. Shows it heading much more farther north and generally going north of Nicaragua, Honduras and heading towards this little like um, inlet bay area of the Yucatan Belize, uh, the, of the way the Yucatan Belize Guatemala and Honduras kind of make there a bit of a um, that a, that a bit of that area where that shows the system heading to. So that's very interesting. Gonna gotta definitely keep an eye on that. The GEPS ensemble model track guidance is the CMC ensemble model track guidance. Also kind of shows the general same thing as the the current ensemble 
run, model track run of the GEFS, so that's very interesting, um, showing a generally same thing of going north of Honduras, Nicaragua, and going into that bit of an inlet bay area, which is uh, quite interesting. Definitely got to keep an eye on that. Here's the current model intensity guidance for Invest 98L, and it looks like, uh, again, towards uh, two, three days from now, again, like I was saying, um, it looks like it will likely become a tropical depression, maybe even a tropical storm. So, yeah, we really got to watch that, and even some of the models really, all of the models really take it up in intensity um, pretty far, um, getting it towards Category 1, maybe near Category 2 intensity um, to some degree, so that's very interesting, and uh, we'll have to really keep an eye on that. Um, so, yeah, we're really going to, again, going to have to really keep an eye on that. Um, now, here's the North Atlanta. We're going to show you the models uh, for of what the uh, GFS, I'm going to show you what the GFS um, and CMC models are showing currently, and the European model for vorticity, what uh, that those three models are showing for the tropics currently. So uh, there is 8 over here, theta is over here, and Invest 98L is down here. So now let's move this forward in time. You can see eta continues to die out as it crosses Florida and then dies out. There's theta continuing to the east and then continuing to die out. Um, now, and then there is Invest 98L. You can see really blowing up in intensity. But you can see this is the uh, current, this is the most up-to-date run, the, the 12Z run of the GFS model. The Just the one GFS model, the main GFS model, is showing Invest 98L more going to the south and hitting Nicaragua in the same general area uh, Ada made landfall. So that's very, very concerning. You can see it really strengthens the storm, gets it um, pretty far down in intensity, gets it down to the 970s. So that's very, very concerning, um, becoming a pretty, shows it potentially becoming a pretty strong system, maybe getting towards, you know, again, that Category 1, Category 2 intensity. Um, so we'll have to really keep an eye on that. So that is what the GFS model is currently showing. For those three systems, uh, here is the CMC model. Again, here is Invest 98L there, Ada is over here, and Theta is right there. Move this forward in time, you can see there's Ada dying out as it crosses Florida and off the east coast. Theta is right over um, here, continuing to move to the east and die out. And then what's interesting is the CMC continues to really not show much of a system forming for Invest 98L, so that's very weird. Um, don't really don't really get hang up, hung up on that part of it, um, because the CMC generally hasn't really been good at all with the tropics this year, so really take don't really take that seriously at all take that with a massive grain of salt that's really not important whatsoever uh here's the european model again here's the uh, type vorticity for showing eta there off the florida coast and then there's theta with that other type vorticity and then invest 98 l is down there Let's br bring this forward in time you see there's theta continuing to die out eta has died out and then there's invest 98 l there you can see um and uh the european model is showing uh, Invest 98L going a bit, a good bit farther north and more strengthening a good bit right before landfall towards that southern coast of Honduras and then dying out over that area. So that's very interesting. Um, really not too sure yet on the exact um, on exactly what's going to happen with, of course, Invest 98L especially. So we're really gonna have to keep an eye on that and we'll have to see uh, what happens with that. All right, now let's go to the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season Wikipedia page. And again, we've had a very record-breaking, very insane hurricane season. This is the most active Atlantic hurricane season on record. We have officially beaten 2005 for the most active Atlantic hurricane season on record. We've had a total of 30 de tropical depressions, 29 total named storms becoming the record high, beating 2005 now by one named storm. Likely we'll get that to 30 named storms now that uh, we have Invest 98L likely to become IOTA. We've had a total of 12 hurricanes, making this the uh, only the uh, second, uh, I believe the only the second um, uh, Atlantic hurricane season to um, have that or tie that tie for the second most. Um, it's gonna it's tying a hurricane season, a hurricane season for the second most amount of total hurricanes ever for. Atlantic hurricane season on record, and then we've had a total of five major hurricanes so far this season. That's truly insane. Total fatalities is around uh, 315, 320. 
Um, total damage is now at uh, around pretty much $36 billion in damage, more or less exactly $35.961 billion in damage. So, again, it's been a pretty, dev uh, pretty uh, devastating hurricane season with the amount of damage. Um, and the, it's a bit a slightly deadly hurricane season as well. But, uh, again, we've had the main big story, of course, with this year's hurricane season is how, just how active it was. Remember, especially uh, getting toward, going through um, that time frame of late August through getting into October, just that whole month of uh, September, going through that whole month of September. It was the most active September for any Atlantic hurricane season on the record, producing a total of 10 named storms in the month of September, making it the most active September for tropical cyclones in the Atlantic on record. Truly insane. Again, look at this. 29th named storm, Theta, formed on November 10th, uh, so yesterday. Oh, so it formed yesterday. It formed late overnight Monday, but officially was named um, very early on the morning on um, on Tuesday. So uh, that's what it, And then it says none for the record latest amount, of, uh, record latest 29th named storm, because this is the first time we've ever gone to 29 named storms again, uh, to clarify that. We, this is the record latest we've ever got. This is the farthest we've gotten through any named storms. We've gone through 29 named storms, and we've never had 29 named storms in a hurricane season before. So uh, that is truly insane. Total ACE so far this season is up around 156.12 units. Um, so that's, uh, that's, we're in a hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season. This is a hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, so truly, truly insane. Uh, yeah. Uh, here is Ada and Theta. Again, Ada has prompted hurricane watches, tropical storm watches and warnings, and storm surge watches and warnings for the United States, um, particularly, of course, just the west coast of Florida there where it's going to <clears throat> uh, make landfall. Uh, moving into uh, around Thursday, Friday or so. Um, actually, no, I believe it's more Friday, Friday into Saturday, more or less, is around that time frame where it will likely make landfall on the west coast of Florida. Um, but uh, you can see, uh, so far, Ada has caused a total damage total, though, of at least around $3.178 billion in damage and has killed at least around 154 people. So it's uh, it's been a pretty devastating and, de and deadly storm it's definitely the deadliest storm uh this year so far this year's hurricane season and one of the costliest tropical cyclones so far this year's hurricane season uh, and then of course there's theta that's really not probably not going to bring much damage or any deaths uh, or affect really any areas um so that's a good thing definitely a really good thing but again we're gonna have iota likely added Tropical Depression 30 and then and then IOTA added here to have a total of 31 systems in total, but a, th a total of 30 named storms total. So that's truly, truly insane. Um, so yeah, again, IOTA is now the next name on the list, and then there's Kappa, Lambda, and Mu. Uh, and with the way, honestly, with the way, just the fact that the Atlantic hurricane season this year, just uh, it's not showing any signs of any signs of stopping. I gotta say, we might honestly get through Moo by the end of the Atlantic hurricane season. So that's truly insane. That would put us at a record high total of 33 total named storms. That's that's insane. We will be 2005 by what is that? Uh, one, two, like five named storms. We're gonna be 2005 by like five named storms if that were to occur. With and plus 2005 was the previous record holder for record amount of total named storms. So that's truly insane if that were to occur. But in any case, it looks like we'll be seeing 30, probably anywhere between 30 to 33 named storms in the end of this year's hurricane season. So uh, that's that's just m mind blowing, truly mind blowing that 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 this is the case. That that's gonna actually occur. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see if we get any more hurricanes or even, hell, major hurricanes so, uh, throughout the rest of the season. Um, because, again, the official end of the Atlantic hurricane season is November 30th, the last day of November. So we technically only have about, uh, like, a three or so weeks left of the Atlantic hurricane season officially. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Because uh, according to this timeline graph on Wikipedia showing the um, timeline of all the named storms we've had. They've added on December here at the end, so we'll see, you know, getting towards that end of no November time frame, see if 
we'll be getting continuing to get some name storms going into December. So we'll have to see how that goes. But that's that's truly really mind blowing, honestly. In any case, that we're gonna have 30 plus name storms by the end of this year's hurricane season. Um, but uh, yeah, in any case, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a really long video, um, but uh, hopefully you guys really enjoyed this video, found it informative. This has been my update on the tropics going on, what's going on with the tropics currently, with uh, Eta and Theta going on, the two name storms currently going on, and then. Uh, likely what will in the future just in a few days become iota so that's uh, going to be that's really insane um that will become again our 30th named storm of the season once invest 98l is named um which is mind-blowing again but uh, yeah i really hope you guys really enjoyed this video found it informative if you did please consider consider liking the video commenting on the video if you're a first time viewer and you liked what you saw in today's video if you like tropical content i do all kinds of that content i do that content a ton on my channel so please consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye